All right, welcome to another episode of Medicine Mondays. I am your truly Dr. Barry Pierre, your favorite board certified internist, host of Medicine Mondays, host of the Paris of Better Health series. Make sure you check that out on our early YouTube channel. Uh, this week, ha we have a special guest for you guys. You, again, I, I like to hype up all of my guests, right? So I think they're all special, but I think this one is even more telling one because it is, I, I don't want to say a chip off my old block, right? But like she has a lot of the traits that I love, uh, not only as a physician, but really just as the entrepreneur. And I think, especially in our world in healthcare, we do not talk about the, the healthcare entrepreneurs enough. And I want to make sure, first of all, shout out to Dr. Nidarko, Dr. Outside the Box. He's a good friend of mine, good friend of the show. Um, and, you know, he's my motivation to kind of really kind of highlight other professionals, especially physician professionals, especially medical moguls as well, kind of doing their thing. First of all, Dr. Melva, thank you uh, for coming on our show today. We're going to, like I said, we're going to get into your business today. We're going to talk a lot about what you're doing. But first of all, just thank you for gracing our presence today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be on your show. I appreciate the invitation. Yeah, shout out to Dr. Nidarko. Also, he, he inspired me as well uh, to do entrepreneurial and podcasting. So so be before we begin a little bit, let's let's kind of, you know, give give the audience a little bit about, you know, who Dr. Belva is, right? And, you know, again, in any greedy, more of obviously, you know, you can, you know, do a couple of sentences on the healthcare related standpoint, but more importantly, people want to know who is Dr. Melva, the businesswoman, right? Like, let's let's talk a little bit about that. Before we get to your business. Sure, sure, sure. So hello, hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here again and to meet your audience. I'm Dr. Melva Pinbingham and I'm a board certified radiation oncologist. I'm a wife, mother of three, serial entrepreneur and investor. And I help top uh, healthcare professionals and other top income earners create multiple streams of income because I, I got to this place in my life where I realized my wealth portfolio wasn't diversified. It, it dealt, you know, it, it was very heavily on my high income paying job as a physician. And throughout my career, my husband and I really have been entrepreneurs for our lifetime, but we looked at creating multiple streams of income. So that's how we help other people do that with the strategy, the background, the wisdom and the support. So. So I want to kind of talk about, get us, get us from the beginning. Right. And you know, I heard I heard your um, your interview on the Delta Delta Entrepreneur Delta, Podcast. Yeah, 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 Delta, Delta, yes. And you know, so I, I definitely want to kind of get into kind of nitty degree of really what makes a physician kind of want to go into this space in the first place, right? Because like I, you kind of mentioned, our typical day jobs, quote unquote, pay us very well. Um, so it usually takes a lot of extra work, right, to kind of do things on the side, right, and make really a, a viable living from it, right? So let's take us from the beginning, like, what was the kind of the motivation, kind of those first steps that say, you know what, this is the direction I kind of want to go in from a, a path related standpoint? Right. So gosh, if I take it back, I, my entrepreneurial kind of dreams, I think, started before I was officially an MD. So I think it's a little different than some other physicians. So gosh, from eBay, we sold on Amazon. Like we got, I don't know if you remember the show NCIS and I don't want to go to jail for this, but like we imported it from China. And I remember one of the shipments got stuck at the port and I was like, okay, I'm done. Maybe this isn't legal. We sold like credit repair books back when I was actually in medical school. And wow. we did a lot of things online. You know, it's like, I saw someone and this, this is how I approach everything. You see a concept and then someone's proven it. And then it's like, okay, how can I add my flavor onto that? And can it work? And at the time that was, that was, it was easy. And the eBay business actually was, I don't know if you've heard of rugged warehouse. Um, oh, no. now, now it's like Gabe's, but at the time they would have name brand clothes. And I think I was in medical school at the time and I was dating my husband, who's my now husband. And I remember we went and we found like Abercrombie and Fitch or Levi jeans. It was these name brands. And on eBay, you could package them up as a wholesale. So we were making like thousands of dollars going to the store, doing what people now, you know, call like drop shipping on Amazon. Yeah. And it, it didn't have a name. You know, we sold shoes that were um, imported, that were legal, that weren't like copyright. And my husband had like a, a vendor's license for the corner. So, so these things started very slow. And at first it was, okay, can we do this? Can we make it work with what we're doing? And, you know, can I be a physician or a medical student at the same time? And in undergrad, I tell the story about Mel's Benny Donuts. So I think I went to a fair or something and I saw these little donuts, they're cake donuts. And the, the company was called Little Orbits out of Minnesota. And anyway, I took out a student loan because I had an academic scholarship. So I still had room to take out a student loan. 
So again, I don't want to go to jail for any of these stories, but I took out a student loan and I bought this uh, donut machine and it made a hundred mini dozen donuts an hour. And you could either have cinnamon sugar or powdered sugar. And I was a resident advisor at Duke University. And so I was very close with student affairs. So they gave me permission to do events that I was paid for. So like one of the big ones at Duke basketball is big, right? So it was Midnight Madness and we did the senior like night event paid off the machine. And then looking back, they were like, oh, wow, we had no idea it was a real donut machine with this wattage in the dorm. I was like, well, you know, I filled out all the paperwork, but I don't think they expected like a senior Duke to have this huge donut machine. So, you know, it started from there. And then we've had like a gardening gift store, like um, it was called Gardening Gazebo. I graduated Duke. I took a year off between undergrad and medical school. And at the time, my mother was going through breast cancer, um, treatment, which is part of the reason that I'm a radiation oncologist in cancer care. And so I had a job. I couldn't make more than $29,500 with a four-year degree from Duke with a biology degree, um, chemistry minor, and a neuroscience concentration. I couldn't make more than $30,000 because I didn't have experience. So um, I worked at a chemical plant and I was doing something. And then on my lunch breaks, I went to the garden gazebo store that my husband was running that we owned. And so it was like our first franchise. But anyway, I just have these crazy stories like that. So I don't know if that answers your question. I don't want to. No, 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 it doesn't. What, what I like is that there wasn't any kind of one either passion project or one kind of segment. You said, you know, what, I'm going to go. You, you were kind of OK, kind of going with kind of different avenues, which especially Especially, and you know, especially as physicians, right? We typically don't like to rock the boat very much, right? Once we kind of have one setting, we just kind of go all in. And, and, and sometimes it takes so much to even kind of break the monotony of trying to do something different. But from the beginning, you're like, you know, I'm going to try this, 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 and that. Now, where there, now, was it an issue where, you know, time just kind of happened, you kind of moved on? Where there are like failures, stoppages along the way, especially with the donut shop and everything else. Like, what made you kind of stop doing those things and kind of move on to the next venture? Right. Well, a lot of those were like forced based on the medical path. So mm. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I didn't mention the flea market, but we also sold at the flea market. And I wrote, I believe it was my medical school essay about the 4 a.m. flashlight shopper. So we figured out how to go build community. We make all of our money before like 9 a.m. in the morning <laughs> by selling our products to other vendors. Like, you know, I was doing that regional management thing at like 18. And so I wrote that to get into medical school. And when I got into medical school, we sold the donut machine to a gentleman who was building a uh, flea market, which we looked into, but it just wasn't really going to work out. Like me building my own flea market, going into medical school. That was a little too much. You kind of, you're like, you know what, let me not, let me not stretch myself too thin over here. much in between like anatomy class, like making the donuts. So I think things were forceful based on my career, my position in, you know, marriage and childbirth, that type of thing. So it was an evolution. So like we sold the machine, eventually the shoes, the Amazon, the eBay, a lot of regulations came, things change. You, you know how the environment is, things, things uh-huh. change and either you change with it or you evolve because it no longer serves you. And so those changes happen and we, we try to step up the sophistication level. So that was at the point when we had access to more money. And this is one of the points that I make with other healthcare professionals is we have opportunities available to us because of our income that other people don't. So when I started with that pure just intention and hustle and desire to, you know, go out and make things happen, that was different because I had no money. You know, I was making $29,000, which is a blessing to many, but it, it was a limitation for me, especially because it didn't match how much my education costs, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so it, so it was a, a sophistication. I, I'm sorry. I get so excited talking about these things. I forget about some. No, I'm, you know, reason, on a, and, and we were talking kind of before the show, uh, when she was yeah. um, you know, one of the reasons why, like, I, I wanted to talk about on the show is one, because I can, I've been, I shadow follow a lot of people. Um, <laughs> I just do. I just, I just like doing it. And, but she was one who, where I was like, wow, like she's doing a lot of things that I love doing, but more importantly, like she has no problem, like being like out with it. Right. Like, you know, when I, when I tell people like, oh, I do this, this, and that, they're almost like shocked because it's not necessarily something that I'm like, you know, screaming from the rooftops, but like, you know, I, I turn on the live stream, I get the notification and like, oh, she's going on again. She's going on again. And I'm like, oh, I want to get her on the show because not only does she want to do what she actually likes doing, it, but she's like, you know, out and about. And as you can see, you can tell from the passion, um, it's actually fun to talk about. Like, yeah, I'm going to get into her business. This is actually very fun to talk about 
this aspect of you know kind of starting business building business making money from said business like if and and while still doing our and i hate to call it our day job because it is like our day job as being in the healthcare field right 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 i i appreciate that i appreciate that very much and i'll tell you you can get burned by just being out there putting it out but you know, you were kind of mentioning how like you saw me on live and I was out here. I wasn't afraid to say, hey, look, I'm doing this. I'm doing this as far as different business ventures or things that I was doing outside of, you know, the norm. And I was saying that can come at a cost where I got to a point in my life that it was, I care more about my happiness, my family's happiness, fulfillment than what people are thinking of me. And there were times actually that, you know, things will happen. You'll get, um, I'll never forget one of the first times we shared, we own a commercial building it's really my husband's project and I'm along in the in the background for that where there are like seven apartments up top there's a restaurant where um he's building out to open his own restaurant and then an event rental space and it's at oh, the shipyard nice. so it was one of our cool purchases and like when we were first negotiating it we just moved back to Virginia this is about six years ago and we're doing a Facebook live and I had so much interaction so many people on there and they were like congratulations we're so proud of you and you know, I had so many conversations after that, but it was also like these, I don't know, one of my friends who's, uh, I don't know, she's, she's very spiritual. And she's like, I see these eyes, I see these eyes watching you. And I'm like, what do you mean? You're kind of scaring me. And, you know, she was like, don't show the address of the building. And, you know, she talked about jealousy and what happens when you uh -oh. do well. And right around that time, we actually had some theft happen to us. And it was something that we didn't notice. It was someone we knew personally who now we, we, we've like, you know, repaired things because I believe in forgiveness. But that was happening when we were showcasing this. And when something like that happens to you, you get self-doubt. You start to self-sabotage because you don't want to be out there doing well. And I think, I, I just think it's an important point to share that, yes, I'm out there. And yes, I encourage other people to be there. But I know the fear that a lot of, especially physicians have is, well, what happens if, you know, my job find out, finds out that I do this or Yes. You know, what happens if someone thinks I'm boasting about money? And really, that's not what it is. It's for me, I've always been there to inspire other people because it's been important to share my failures just as much as my successes. And I probably share the failures more than the successes that I have because I don't even mention all of them. <laughs> so that's a roundabout way to answer your question. <laughs> What's interesting, had and typically, especially when people are kind of getting ready to get into this mindset or even go into the entrepreneurial mindset. Because uh, it didn't sound like you had many, I guess, mentors, right, in the kind of the beginning, right, to say like, oh, you should do this and that. You just kind of went ahead and did it. Now, did you, was that something kind of purposeful that you were like, no, I'm just going to kind of like, I know this, I know what I want to do. I, I know what I would feels right and I'm going to go. Or, you know, was it like, you know, maybe I should kind of, you know, get some type of guidance to say like, what is the right direction for us? Like, what, what, what was your kind of lean, especially huh. when you're kind of moving outside of, you know, kind of doing what we consider, and I hate to say we even consider it the norm, but just outside of just medicine in general. Right. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of mentorship, masterminding, you know, coaching. I think at the time I've always had a lot of mentors and influential people in my life. So I remember actually in elementary school. So we had, I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. And we had a minority achievement programs. So it was like MAP. And it was like academically gifted programs and minority achievement programs. And in those programs, one of our career days was actually on entrepreneurship. And at the time, I didn't understand it. I didn't know it. My father's a physician. My mother's an educator. So I wasn't really around entrepreneurship, but they planted those seeds at a very young age. So I think I probably had subconscious and people in my community that were doing things. So while I didn't necessarily have that mentorship, it's almost like you say the shadowing, you know, sure. or mimicking what you see Definitely. and that desire was there. So I think I put myself around people that were doing things differently. And then also just honestly, I'm a creative. So I, you know, I'm looking for, I don't know if you're familiar with Odyssey of the Mind, but in the third grade, <laughs> I won the Renata Fusco Award. And that's basically like the most creative out of thousands of people where they just sit you in a room and they give you these prompts and you have to just go with creativity. And apparently I blew it out the water. Now, wow. that's not as successful for me sometimes in medicine, <laughs> right? But I think it was just this desire, like, okay, the seed is planted, this is possible. You know, you can do this. And, and I've always had some type of mentors where my PhD mentor um, at Duke University, I studied the zebra finch. So we studied communication for neuroscience. And he just, Eric Jarvis, Dr. Jarvis, super smart, intelligent guy. He and his wife, Maria, 
And his word for me, like it drove him crazy in undergrad, everything I was involved in between, you know, sorority, community service. And he would just be like, focus, Melba, I need you to focus, <laughs> you know, like, but he had a lot of respect for what, what I was able to do, you know, as long as I didn't, you know, damage his million dollar machine slicing bird brains, you know, but I had that type of mentorship that kept me, I, I guess like they kept me moving forward to my ultimate career goals, which I think is important. And then I had like people in the community to, to watch. So then I think when we had the evolution, it was more mentorship. Like I sought more mentorship. I wanted like systems, strategies, things that I couldn't just figure out. Cause you know, when you get to these like six figure, seven figure status, there's a formula. It, it, people aren't just like willy nilly it. And I think a lot of that just natural passion and desire combined with the right mentorship, that, that was the elevation. That was the difference between now I can say we're franchise owners, you know, multi-franchise owners, you know, we're, you know, high level business coaches that wouldn't happen with just pure desire. And, and if it does, I think that would be difficult to do that with a highly demanding career as an oncologist. Now, now, I don't, now, I swear, I mean, that's like you said, we're, we're, and ladies and gentlemen, we're about to, we're really starting in our business in a minute. Um, the question, especially when your, your, your professor kind of mentioned you doing a lot of things. Now, do you feel like you operate better, right, when you're able to kind of be a franchise owner here, a commercial real estate owner there? Also, like, do you feel you operate in a better space when you're kind of doing all those things, or could you actually? you know, one day say, you know what, I'm only going to do this one thing and then I'm not going to do anything else. That's something that you can even, I, I can tell you me personally, uh, my, my wife gets on me all the time because she feels like I'm always doing a million things, but like, I almost feel like I can't concentrate if I'm only like focusing over, I know it sounds weird, but like, I feel like if I'm no, only over I, here. I, I totally understand, I totally understand that. It's like, I, I'm someone and maybe like you, I work better under pressure I work better knowing that I'm moving towards something else. And this isn't like the only thing I'm doing, but I really learned. And, and actually I talked about this in my group last night. Um, I, I learned about seasons, you know, and I've had to like switch. Okay. I'm going to focus on this for this season. Like, so for example, we own the Cold Stone Creamery, we're working on the second Cold Stone Creamery location and we're in lease negotiation development for the location. And then we're looking at funding, bringing in, you know, family and friends, investors, and so when we first started, we weren't doing expansion. That wasn't the season for Coldstone. The only focus was to operate in the middle of a COVID pandemic without being shut down, not having employees, you know, or ending up in the hospital while selling ice cream that we knew nothing about, right? Like, like that was the season. That's, that's all we tried to do. And the byproduct of that is that we increased sales by $100,000 in the first year. You know, now we're in the season. Huh? It was so crazy. Like, like, like. Honestly, I gotta ask how. Like, how how did you end up at a Cold Stones uh, owning a Cold? Like, how does like and again, like I said, lunch in my community. Like, it's, that's why I, I I love I love just kind of watching. And I love watching my brothers from far. But like, I'm just like interested in like just that process. Like, how did you get to a Cold Stones? Like, and we're not even talking one. It's about to be two. Like, how did right. how did you go there? Right. So a, a lot, and I mention my husband a lot because he is the backbone and he's always the real estate investor. He's done that. And I'm kind of like the support where partnerships there. So he was actually looking, we asked ourselves these questions about how can we expand? What, what are we missing? Because we're, we've saw a lot of people who had done less than what we'd achieved in our you know short 30 plus at the time years of life have higher levels of success. And we asked questions like, is it because we've never had to, like we've never been forced to, you know, we've been blessed to have a home, we can pay our bills, you know, maybe we didn't have that same hunger. And then we asked the other questions of, are we in the wrong avenues? You know, are we only in real estate investing and we're not looking at other streams? And so I think he was listening to, I don't know if he was listening to a podcast or he was doing some research and they talked about leverage and they talked about, how you can get another passive stream if you do this kind of management thing. So one night we were just like kicking on a Saturday night and he was like, hey, the Cold Stone's for sale. And it met, it met the requirements for, you know, a passive stream. And so next thing you know, we were, we were negotiating purchasing in, in business acquisition. That was the phase. So wow. we didn't build it from the ground up. Love it. But, but, but that happened because of that environment and because of being able to 
you know, my husband taking his skill set and his abilities, he's, he's an introvert. So I'm the extrovert and he's the introvert, very like wise and calm. And he always describes himself as a chameleon because he has smarts in a lot of different areas and we attract different type of people. And honestly, when they see the two of us together, they're just like, oh my God, like, <laughs> like, so you're the doctor and you're, you're the real estate investor and you do this and y'all do this together. And I remember being on this uh, real estate show, we, we were on a bus tour and they made a lot of money out of us at the time. That's a whole other story. We didn't realize we were like signing our rights away while they were selling these $40,000 bus tour tickets based on our story. Oh, wow. But actually like, this might be too personal, but I shipped breast milk to him because I was training and he was doing a real estate investment project. I trained in California and he was doing a project in Virginia. And so we talked about oh, wow. how we just made it work. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, ooh, that's a distance. Okay. Yeah, that was a distance, but like that was important to me at the, at the time. And so that's how we came about it because we were open and, and we were aware we were able to look and say, okay, we have access to this money. How are we using it? Yes. We have positioning because you're a physician. We have flexibility because at the time he was a real estate investor and a stay at home father. So it, we just, we just asked because we saw people that had less than us doing much better than us. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a real sobering thing to say, how do we change the game? What, what are we missing? You know, so, you know what I love about that is that especially as especially in our field, right? You know, a lot of times, you know, the general public, right? The general public looks at us and says, yes, in your field, you're a doctor, you're making this, you should be happy, you should be content. And, and you know, just like I know, once you kind of get to where we're at, you know, and we start hanging around other people who, again, are five, 10 years younger than us, making much more money than, like, it, it, it sometimes it, it angers you, but sometimes it drives you as well to say, like, okay, like, Yes, I dedicated because uh, radiation oncology is that that's what like is that is that four plus is that a four plus two residency five, or? five oh, years yeah. total internal no. medicine then four five yeah yeah so yeah I don't okay. even know anymore <laughs> you know so you know we dedicate so much time kind of getting into our one passion project that and you know just like I know time right when we didn't really I didn't at least I didn't realize it at the time like how much valuable time was right like I just thought like I was putting the work in. And I'll kind of get it, but not realizing that I kind of lost a lot of my time right. focusing on this kind of one endeavor. And now we almost have to double back. So I, I love the aspect that you and your husband are like, all right, we're kind of looking around. We're not content, right? Like we're great, right? But we're not content with where we're at because we know we could be doing better, right? And, and just right. again, just the fact that you're like, I'm going to get an ice cream. Sure, why not? Like, and it sounds, it sounds weird. It may sound crazy to the general public, but what you've done is now you kind of open up. So now someone behind you can be like, well, you know what? You know, Dr. Love got an ice cream shop. Oh, I like, I like ice cream too. Like, let me look into it. Like, so just that aspect, that's why I'm, I love uh, kind of what you do and like how you're doing it because you don't realize the, the box that you're continuing to allow to kind of expand, right? You're not being forced to, especially radiation on college is crazy, but like, is you're not allowing yourself to kind of pigeonhole yourself and say, all right, I'm this type of doctor. This is what I'm going to do. Like, no, I'm just I'm a doctor over here, but I'm also a businesswoman. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a professional. I'm a business, I mean, business acquisition, that's, that's, that's interesting. But like, that's like, I'm doing all of these things there. So that's why I just kind of love how expansive you guys are doing it. Uh, and I think that's kind of the right way because unfortunately our field, and I've, I've talked about this before, in, in medicine, we're not necessarily taught um, to, to do that, right? Where, you know, a lot of us are kind of taught to, you know, kind of be employees forever. Um, and, and almost sometimes discourage, right, going that route of wanting to own, wanting to take uh, a, a more uh, responsible and managerial role. So that's why I just love everything you're doing, um, you know, as far as the cold stone is uh, concerned. So, it, it, so I heard you talk on the, the interview where you guys, I guess, increased sales like uh, almost like $100,000 or $100,000? Like In the first year, actually it was less than a year because we... We, it was a, this was a long process to acquire the, the coal stone. So I won't say it was easy. The biggest hurdle we had, if, if anyone is considering this, is the lease agreement. So the location and the reason we chose this site when we saw the opportunity, I really, my, my husband checked it out, is that a casino was coming in and the casino revved up the revenue for that entire um, retail location. And mm -hmm. the owner, it, it was just like you look at real estate investing, if you've ever done that. You look for properties, you know, divorce, bankruptcy, 
someone's moving, could use improvements, paint and carpet, that type of thing. So business acquisition, it's the same thing. Something with promise and potential that needs a couple tweaks, but the person with it has to leave for some reason. And in this case, uh, Tony, who sold it to us, where we we have a lot of respect. He's, he was so cool and he's he was really proud. It was almost like he was passing his 10 year old baby to, to us, you know, we were, we were really interviewed as people, <laughs> you know, and, and it wasn't like it was just going to anyone. So he was in a situation where he had a sick family member and he was, he was kind of ready to go to that next um, phase of his life based on that. And so I forget where I was going with this, but the hundred thousand sales increase. So the way that was possible is that one, there was the potential Two, there was another source that was coming that was going to just you know, like a rising tide raises all boats. Right. Like you yeah. bring a successful yeah. entertainment center next to a, a you know, a quick serve restaurant. Right. Your alone is gonna... right. It's just, it's right. It's going to increase it. And then my husband who operates the Coldstone at the time, and now he has a regional manager that we've brought in because we're expanding and we also have a subway. He really oh, came wow. in there. Like... <laughs> huh? The way it's going. Okay. Yes. Yeah, if you like the way I just throw that in there, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Eat no, fresh. No, I, that, I'm loving that. I'm loving okay. So with you. Okay. The subway's a little, the subway's a little more work though. And I say that a lot because I, you know, are, we're going to have you, Are you guys, I know you said uh, you guys have a regional, are you, are you guys like, like in the store? Like, no. Doing stuff? Okay, okay. No, no. So like the whole thing with the 1% code and the 1% code collective, our private Facebook group is, it's all about leverage and systems and looking at a CEO model where the business can make money without you. So that's the only reason that my husband saw this as a business acquisition opportunity was that we could go in, he could have the strategy. I'm really the support. So when we first started, it was fun to like take the kids in there and build ice cream cakes on the weekend. Or, you know, when we first took it over, the manager who had been there for like 20 years in, in the whole system of, sub, of uh, Coldstone was out. So we were in there like 16 hour days, but that wasn't the goal. Yeah. But now it's, it's management. So my husband is really the brains behind that. So the increase came because he saw opportunities, you know, as far as like the, the flow for the orders, adding third-party delivery. They only had one of the cold stones. So the efficiency of serving clients, increasing customer service, wow. you know, changing the pay rates, making sure they get tips. It was, it was so many things that he went in. And one of the things I, I applaud him for is he had no training in the restaurant industry. Like he had, he had owned, or he had worked at a subway as a teenager back when we were dating in high school. He worked at a Subway and I think a couple other restaurants, but he'd never like done, or maybe he did ice cream shop too at some point, but it was just that. And, and this is what I tell people too. I mean, more employee side, but not necessarily the, the, the management administrative side. Yeah, second. but I think, I think it's more of like untapped potential. So he had these skills, but he was never really in a place that he had a chance to use them. And so skills that he was successful with that got him success in other areas of his life he was able to take those lenses and his real estate lenses to see improvement. And mm -hmm. I, I just, I think that's cool. Cause I, I bet a lot of people listening, they have someone in their life like that who could do that if you were open to it, you know, instead of saying, Hey, you have to have this degree to be able to do this. You don't always need the degree to make a difference and increase sales. You know, I, I, and I love, I love, especially I love that aspect because I think a lot of times we get kind of pigeonholed in thinking that we have to have some type of, quote unquote qualifications, right? right? To get into, you know, that space of, you know, business, running a business. But it's like, no, if, if you have, you have the traits that will make you a good business owner, good man, good, like good CEO, like, right. and if you have, again, it's almost like complimentary, like, like you, you don't necessarily need to have all of the traits, right? If someone right. you're partnering with has the ones that you're missing, you guys go together and then uh, you know, kind of prosper in, in that sense too. That's what I'm, right, I'm, right. I'm, I'm loving all kind of facets uh, yeah, in yeah, that yeah. regard. Because yeah. I think it makes so much sense and it, uh, it allows us to kind of continue to be open, right, with possibility. And I think that's one thing that, especially, and you probably know too, especially in our, in our field, I feel like a lot of my colleagues, their, their, their sadness and their burnout associated with our field, especially in healthcare, is that they feel like their opportunities are essentially closed off. Yeah. Right? Like they have yeah. nothing else to do but that. And the that that they're doing, they hate. Right. So right. like now they're stuck in this, like, what what am I supposed to do? I I hate doing the thing that, you know, they pay me to do. 
but I don't feel like I could do anything else. So that's why I'm, I'm just loving everything and just soaking it all in. Um, especially again, and that looks we kind of talked about this uh, kind of before. Um, you know, I've been following her. You know, she does affiliate marketing, she does all these things there. And even like, I, I know she does real estate, and I'm definitely, I like getting a whole restaurant. It's like, I want to get into real estate now. So I'm just kind of just kind of following them. Like, all right. Because I just love seeing. And it's just one of those things where, like, now that I see, like, all right, yeah, look at the other person also doing that and, and not necessarily having to quit their day job. Like, yeah, you can go ahead and do it, too. And really, that's sometimes that mental lock is enough to say, like, oh, I saw someone do it. That means I should be able to do it, too. And uh, maybe not to that specific level, but at least, like, I know it's possible. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, at the end of the day, whether we fail, whether we sell the restaurants, if we get out of real estate, whatever happens, if I end up staying in medicine forever, like at least you've seen, hey, this is what it looks like. So now build your own story. And when I tell people in any of my courses or classes is, you know, I want, I want my ceiling to be your floor. Like I want you to take what I've done and just do it 10 times better because I know there are people who could do it better. They could do it differently. And that's, that, that's really the goal, you know, is like what's possible and what works and cut out what doesn't, <laughs> you know, and, and I, I, I work I, for somebody else. And you, and you drop such a gem too, because I think especially in, at least, especially in, I, I always refer to medicine because we're having both positions, but like let's say you're not medicine. Um, I think the, the aspect of failing, being okay, right, is something that we don't gripe over well. Um, and on, I think on the, on the show recently, I talked about like how I got sued, right? Like, you know, some sued, right? And like out in my mindset, I'm thinking, wow, did I fail somewhere, right? So here's this profession where we feel like we have to be 100% correct. But like when you're going into this kind of field of entrepreneurship and business, you have to be okay with understanding that there may be some hiccups, right? Where you just don't, it's not successful. Right. It's what you learn from that hiccup that is gonna make you successful the next go around. So that's why I love kind of the encompassing aspect of you know what you guys are doing. Uh, Cause I think it's so important, right? And more importantly, like, you know, and just a quick segue, right? Like, let's talk about what you're doing, right? Like, cause we, we kind of mentioned it before. I'm actually, you know, full disclosure, I'm actually, you know, 1% collective uh, private Facebook group as well. So you should be in it um, as well. We will definitely make sure the links are in the description. Um, let's talk about what you're doing, um, the coaching, the, the, like all massive. Let's talk about all of that um, and, 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 and tell people where they can get you and find you and, and really help get them to the next level too. Right. Well, thank you for that. So yes. So now I've uh, recently launched the 1% code C O D E collective, and it's a private Facebook community for men and women, health, healthcare professionals, top income earners who want to learn the systems, the strategy to leverage their six figure income to create a seven figure net worth. So we talk about issues of fear, uncertainty. You know, we have live shows that we go over things that people are struggling with. We talk about short-term rentals, real estate investment, business acquisition. And really I open up my life behind the scenes of what's going on and the steps that got me to be successful. Super excited to be hosting uh, my first masterclass. It's called the 1% Code Masterclass. And it's a two-day event. There'll be four sessions. So it starts August 23rd and 24th. And they can register by going to drmelva.com forward slash masterclass and doctor spelled out. Um, again, that's drmelva.com forward slash masterclass. And it's a free event and we'll have four sessions and We'll, we'll walk through what the 1% code is. And really it's the, the strategy, the mindset, the execution, the support to you know, discuss how you risk management, career constraints, um, leveraging your six figure income into a seven figure net worth, the top trending income streams that you can add in addition to your career. Because the bottom line is I love being a physician. And right now, that is my main income. And so I'm not in a position that I want to stop. And I know a lot of my colleagues aren't, you know, there's actually some happy doctors, but slowly you want to set yourself, you know, <laughs> slowly you want to set yourself up to be able to work because you want to, not because you have to. So, um, That's and then we, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that is a gem. I don't know if y'all realize that is work because you, know, cause again, I, again, I'll just speak for myself. I work with a lot of colleagues who work because they absolutely have to. Just, they don't like going to work. Right. They're always complaining about said work, but because they have to go, they keep on coming back. Um, but when you get to that point where you want to work, like that's that's just a that's that's level I'm going. 
I'm I'm trying. I'm going for it. Like it's just, I don't want to say I'm trying. I'm gonna I'm gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, because <laughs> I, I think it's it's so important. And so this is a, a two day two day masterclass course. Um, again, remember links will be in the description. We'll make and make sure uh, you're signed up uh, for that. Um, and it is is online. Is it? Is, yes. So it's, it'll be online once you register. You'll get a, a link to a Zoom link, and also be streamed in the One Percent Code Collective. So we'll have more of an interactive. I'm doing sessions. It's four sessions. So the first one's at twelve o'clock during lunch, and then the second's at seven o'clock. And there are different sessions each day. So it's, it's kind of like a two day, 48 hour blitz. <laughs> I know everyone's busy. The recordings will be sent out. If you can't be there live, you get a workbook so you can take notes, follow through, and I'll be able to answer questions that you have. And really, I just want you to pour into everyone because one of the things that stopped me was I did so many courses and things where people taught the, the what and the why, but not the how. Mm. I, I want to give it to you like all, I want to give you the what, why, and how, and then if it makes sense, um, I do have the 1% circle, which is a high level mastermind, where if you want me to work with you on these items and do the implementation, then you can come and work with me. But I don't want to hold anything back because I, I love the fact that people can get value just from, you know, listening to a live or listening to a podcast. And if you can get value, that means I can help somebody else. So that's really where I'm coming from. And I talk about the podcast again, you know, unless you know anything, okay. I love, I love highlighting uh, my fellow podcast host uh, as well. Let's talk about your podcast. Yeah. yeah so uh, I work with Dr. Nee too. I did his program and my goal was, and I don't know if he likes this or not, but my goal was, can I get, because I taught courses on outsourcing, you know, that you can't do it all by yourself. You don't have the bandwidth to do it all yourself. So my challenge was, can I take your course and have my team work on it to be able to launch a podcast? So I, I purchased his course and work with my team and we launched July 1st. So I think I've just put out my seventh episode. So I'm very new at podcasting. Um, I, I love it. It's just like, I don't know how to explain it. It's just when someone has listened to what you said and they give you feedback and then they've made a change in their life and you're like, oh, you heard me? Like, cause you kind of feel like you're just talking to yourself, right? When you're recording. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, you know, I think we're on, we're like, I think I'm on like 184, 85. Congratulations. And I'm still like shocked when person like, oh, I heard you on the podcast when you said, I'm like, oh, how you said, like, I think we're, we're almost sometimes in disbelief that people actually like listen to us and then more importantly, listen to what we say and then act upon yeah. uh, what we say on something that we might have recorded a week ago, two weeks ago, a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I, I love, I just love podcasting in, in general. And it's, it's one of those things where like, yes, I can record, comfort in my home, relax, chilling. And then a month down the line, someone happens to be on, you know, searching a website, like, oh, let me see. and then listen. And then all of a sudden they, they gain value. And I, I didn't right. have to like go to them directly uh so yeah. I, I love i love the ask right and you're, you're definitely right when it comes to uh outsourcing um because i actually have two i have two vas uh myself and it's um, i'm just at the point where i just record and then i just i hand off and then it gets posted like it's like and that's such i mean and again that's the the entrepreneur um uh kind of way i guess right where you know right. like like again i like i still like my day job right like i like taking care of patients in the hospital <laughs> i don't necessarily have the time to edit it you know post it on my website so, like i don't necessarily have the time or want to do it um and i should be able to delegate that so like i, I just again i love that aspect of being able to kind of take an idea take a passion and then you know you know be diligent say like hey this is what i want done with it and then kind of letting someone else kind of run with oh, yeah. it yeah, I, I love that. It's all, you know, one of my business mentors always talks about, one of my business mentors always talks about us not doing the tactical things. And I know, especially for physicians and some of my dental colleagues get stuck on the tactical things. So they don't start the podcast because they're freaked out on the technical. Now you and I both do technical. I love ClickFunnel backend. I figured out all of Infusionsoft. Like I can do the technical, but I had a mentor say, hey, that's not where your value is right now. Yes. Um, uh, me, Nehemiah Davis, he's a person I follow. He's talked about doing like eliminating minimum wage activities. Yes. And a lot of times, you know, it's, it's one of the things where like, can I do that? Sure. Um, and a lot of, especially when you're, and I can tell you, you know, let's community, when you're first starting, you are doing a lot of these things um, until you start realizing like, I don't want to do these things anymore. And then you, when, when you have a system, 
you're able to pass it off. But like, and I think, you know, Dr. Melvin kind of mentioned it, like system, system, system. If you don't have a system, you're not passing nothing off. No. And you'd be surprised the amount of, you know, my, my colleagues who don't, who, who do a thing, but don't like, don't even write down how to do it. So there's no way they could even pass it off. So like, I, like when, when I hear Dr. Melvin, this kind of master class, like I can only imagine this kind of learning kind of just those steps and those process. And, you yeah. know, I think Dr. Melvin is going to be a fabulous coach, right? So if you're, if you're, again, especially I have a lot of physician colleagues here who are teeter-tottering, they don't really like medicine as much. Uh, you know, Dr. Melvin is definitely someone you might want to be in contact with, get in their master class because like here is someone who's done it, who, and again, we, we talked about commercial real estate. Do you have any residential real estate or just commercial? Like yeah, I guess, no, it's, we I guess a, it's mixed because it's a. Yeah, uh, my, my husband does rentals. He oversees rentals. So we started in the fix or flip, yeah. buy and hold. So we've, he's, he's done a lot of properties. And again, I'm that, that back end support. But, and again, so it's, so you have a coach who has seen so many different avenues. So you don't have to feel like you're constricted and saying like, well, you know, I, I only like this and she like, no, she can kind of help. She'll likely be able to help you on all different kinds of facets of being able to kind of, I don't, I, and I, I hate saying breakaway. I love medicine, medicine. I love you. Um, uh, but you know, <laughs> but being able to kind of break away and be more and expound upon yourself. Cause, and I think that's always, always, always key, especially if you want to be in this medicine thing for the long run and don't feel like you're being burnt out and don't feel like you have to again it's no worse feeling and i don't care how much the job is paying you there's no worse feeling in um that notice of like i have to do this like oh like i gotta drag myself up uh, right. to, because again it doesn't matter again it does not matter how much they pay you if you're if you hate it you hate it you hate it right right so we, we talked about the Facebook group. Um, we talked about the master class. Anywhere else they can kind of follow you, just kind of kind of listen yeah, so, in. So the podcast is the 1% Code Podcast. I'm on all streaming platforms now. I thought I was on all before, but I realized we hadn't submitted to Google. And I got someone that listened to the podcast. And they're like, I loved your podcast, but I'm an Android user. Can you get on Google? And I was like, oh, thank you for the email. I thought I was... You know, and I'm like typing my team, like we're not on Google, <laughs> you know, but, but again, that's that do it imperfectly. So I think earlier this week, I found out, you know, it says now streaming on Google podcast, yes. but you know, uh, we got it started. Yes. So, and you, and, I mean, we could probably talk like, I don't, I don't want to keep you because I like, I'm, I am the, the king of like just starting stuff imperfectly because, because we know what paralysis in action looks like, right? We know and want it to be perfect. And if it's not perfect, I'm not going to take an extra step. Like we have a lot of our colleagues in that same kind of boat. And mm -hmm. it's the ones who move, because again, in business, in business, you're not going to be perfect from the start. You got to be perfect as you go along, right? Like, so, so I, I, lo I love that. Like, no, like, yeah, I wasn't on Google. That's okay. We're, we're on Google now, right? Like <laughs> we're on Google now. Yeah. Last week, no. If you're on Android, you wouldn't have found me. Nope. <laughs> so again, make sure you download her podcast. Make sure you sign up for this masterclass. I will be there. Uh, make sure you are in her Facebook group. I'm already in there as well, too. And if you really want to, again, take yourself to the next level and you just need some of that coaching, right? You just need someone to be able to help take you from point A to point B to point Z, right? Like think about joining her master, her, um, her mastermind as well, too, right? Yeah. All, all amazing. 1% circle, yes. And that information is on my website. So we'll talk more about it in the masterclass. But I love it. I love yeah. it. Thank you for coming. Thank you for enlightening us. Thank you for really kind of getting us motivated. Um, again, on Medicine Mondays, Lunch of My Podcast, you know, we, we, we are always talking medical, right? But like, I, I'm, I'm starting to want to infuse a little bit more business related discussions because I know that's important. Um, I know it's important for the community and for people who are listening. So thank you again for uh, joining and kind of kicking these things off for us. Thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun, Dr. Barry. This is a lot of fun. <laughs>